All right, so we're going to do 10 by 10 on the dips. Last time I did this, it was tough. I did it with Nate Johnson, who was visiting here from the States. Today, we've got Fabien joining me from France to join in the 10 by 10. I'm going to try with the 10 kilos today. It doesn't seem like it would be possible based on my experience with the 10 by 10 at body weight, but I've just seen Nico do it with 45 kilos. So if I can't do it with 10, I think this might be my last ever session in the gym. <laughs> Missed up the timer. Uh, you start already. It wasn't on. We started a little bit before. There's a 10 second. That's fine. I've got to get it done in 9 minutes 50. It's 10 in 10 minutes. So technically when you do it on the minute, you do it in 9 minutes and 20 seconds or something like that. So there's a little bit of slack within the time. A little bit extra there. Now, as far as depth goes, you should be able to break the line here with your chin, but it's not actually necessary that you duck your chin down. Up to you on your standards, what you want to do, but you want to get to, to depth. Whether you actually move the head down to get lower is, is kind of irrelevant, but we're about to start again. Yeah. How do you feel first set? Pretty easy, but I think I'm gonna be surprised in like <laughs> three or four sets. My maximum on this was 10 D8. Yeah. No, uh, what is the number of the first is 10, 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes. And eight repetitions. You've done 10 sets of eight reps. Today, 10 sets of 10. Yeah, they look smooth and fast. We just matched, maxed out the bench press. We got to 125, three singles at 125. I don't know if I've had a day where I've done three singles at 125. It's not a new best but for maximum weight, but probably a rep best. So if you keep getting new bests in different ways, you can't really doubt that you're actually better than you've ever been. It's already feeling like maybe, maybe not, but if you can get to six, you kind of know, okay, let's just push. How's that feeling, Fab? Feel all right. This, yeah. Style of training gives you a lot of volume, but it also gives you more elastic style repetitions, and we want it to be more elastic style. The gains in CrossFit, they make with faster repetitions. What are, your, what are your thoughts on like slow tempo versus fast? You've been thinking a lot about this stuff. Uh, depending on what you want to work on. But I think working fast repetition can make you handle like more repetition. If you do like fast thing. But yeah, depending on how you feel, you need to like progress slowly and don't go that fast for the first time maybe. Get to used to be this uh, kind of movement before doing like very fast stuff. Maybe your tissue. Not yeah, if you, if you jump straight into it, there's some risk if you go full on plyometric style repetitions. You're welcome to join Niels, no problem. There's time for three. But yeah, we want to be able to go fast, we want to be able to go slow. The Poliquin system and the push of that community is kind of like a lot about controlling repetitions. And that's great. And with an ATG, a lot of the stuff is controlled. But that's because it's contrasted with dunking. Yeah. And for example, myself, I'm way better doing like slow eccentric than the concentric fast. That's my nature, kind of. Come on. Yeah. It's really tough. It's tough. 
We're getting a few rounds. There's a stimulus here, regardless. But that's only halfway, and that's getting brutal. With the game of very dense training like this, you get a lot of repetitions. Going for 100 reps in 10 minutes, it's a good thing. Improve the body, improve the mind. When this score goes up, then the 1RM dip is also very likely to go up. Getting a lot of practice. Hi. Getting a lot of practice. One more. I got 70 for two reps. Recently, you probably need a body weight dip to be able to finish this. Eight. Two more. Nine. Once you get close to fatigue like that, it's over. Stop you here. Too slow. Come on. Yeah, once you get close to yeah, yeah, I know. Failure, Too far, yeah. That's hard. It's a tough game. One more. Eight. Nine. One more. Yeah. She told us halfway twice, and then all what this guy's talking about, but uh, that's seven sets. Coming around fast. <laughs> solid <laughs> pump, solid pump. Muscle wants to grow. So it's one thing to eat a lot of food, but if the muscle doesn't have a stimulus that it wants to add more protein, it's not really going to work. You can't just eat your way big without getting fat unless you're just a young man and your hormones are driving the change, which yeah. is normal. <laughs> to go beyond your natural point. Okay, four more. One, two, three, four. To get beyond your natural point, you're going to have to drive the demand from the tissues. No one in my family was particularly muscular. I like sitting around the 95 muscle number, you can measure your muscle number within the Uncom 5 app or the Pro app. It gives you an idea of how much muscle you have relative to your height. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can grind it out, but if I grind it out, then it's over. Three. It's very fresh. One. Come on. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Wow. So you drive the demand to the tissue, the tissue responds, getting bigger. You can surpass where you would be naturally, just based on a diet of meat or something. You can have a good physique just based on a good diet, but it'll be your natural genetic position where you can drive beyond that through anabolic stimulus. Depends on your goals, whether you need to train or not. That's it. Last. 
All right, so after 10 sets, I understood the halfway there thing is telling you halfway within the work interval, not halfway within the whole block. I thought the guy was messing with me the whole time. Fabian's done them pretty easily. You can do the same thing on dips, you can do the same thing, deep knee bends. Simple, not easy. We got the well done off the computer there. Drive the stimulus, test new things, take yourself to new levels. If you work on the 10D10, or say you can't even do the 10D10 yet, you can't yet do the 10D10, do what you can, 10D6, 10D8, and then also work on the 10D1. So almost everyone can add some weight, and when you add some weight, you're on the continuum, you're on the spectrum, you're in the game of progressing that strength. So the 10D10 is gonna drive a lot of repetitions, practice of the movements, also good for mental toughness, good for getting a lot of practice, and they're gonna be more plyometric repetitions. If you're taking it near maximal, you're gonna go fast. Any final thoughts, Fab? What was your experience there? You hit that pretty easily. It's a new PR. <laughs> I haven't done 10 D10, I was 10 D8 before, but we don't have that, uh, like the real deep yeah. spots at where I'm training at the moment, so it's easier when you got something like that. <laughs> Always a good feeling to yeah. do something you haven't done yet. It's always, exactly. You keep doing things we haven't done, then good things are going to happen. Do them in skill, do them with speed, do them with stamina. This is the stamina game. It's not really about strength. Keep pushing your strength up. It's going to be a proportion of your strength, but it's still a lot of stamina to get through the 10 d 10 And then stretch as well. Build those five capacities. Good things will happen. Keep besting. You can best pretty much every day when you use this system. Either you hit a skill best, or you hit a speed best, or you hit a stamina best, or you hit a strength best. I got the best strength there with the 125 for three singles on the bench. Definitely haven't done anything like that in a long time. And I don't think I've ever done uh, three singles at 125 in the same session. And then I didn't get what I wanted there on the 10D10. And yeah, it's... it's uh, it is what it is, you know. I think you, you take the wins when you get them, you take the losses when you get them. I think next time I'll do it with the five kilos, work my way up from there. But there's a stimulus today that my body can adapt to and recover from. And yeah, that's the game. So let me know what your scores are. If you've got any questions, hope this helps. I'd love to see you improve yourself. If you can beat Nico on the 10D10, 45 kilos, please let me know. Let's continue to drive ahead, drive each other forward. It's not so much about beating Nico, you know, or beating someone else, but if you can draw inspiration from that, it was really seeing him getting the 45 that made me think, well, maybe I can get the 10 kilos. And I didn't get it today, but the question, doubt still remains, you know, am I capable of doing that? I, th I think I am. I, th I think today proves that to me as well. It's only the second time I've worked on this 10D10. The fun is in that mystery, the fun is in getting after it, testing yourself, seeing if you can do something you couldn't do. Almost everything within Uncommon Success, initially people feel like there's no way I could ever do that. 60 second handstand, 90 second handstand, body weight snatch, doing splits, doing back bridges. It seems as though it would be impossible, but then one year later, two years later, four years later, it becomes normal. For sure you can do way, way more than you think you can. You just need to be in a network or connected to other people who are doing stuff ahead of you that are pushing you forward. A lot of guys did first back somersaults, did a lot of back somersaults on the trampoline. Kevin hit his back somersault here on the floor yesterday. When you're in that environment where it's like, oh, maybe I can, that little bit of doubt, maybe I can, maybe I can, what if I could? If you continue to put yourself in that environment where you can have that little bit of doubt, maybe you can, then good things can happen. So that's the game. That's what I played today. Thank you, Fab, for joining me for the, for the game, for the bench press, for the dips. And uh, Fabian also brought down the microphones as well because the other one wasn't working. So that's us. Uh, let us know what else we want to see. The guys are here for, for a few more days. And uh, I mean, there's going to be people here for the next few months, actually. Um, let us know what you want to see. Talk soon.